welcome everyone. Welcome those of you that are joining us here on Zoom Live as well as YouTube Live. It's always a great privilege in having the opportunity to come and speak to you about uh, things pertaining to the kingdom of God, things pertaining to, to life. Very, very important that we help people to understand how to live life and to live that life more abundantly. So today we're going to really get into discussing a topic that I think is really going to be a blessing to, to many of you. I think it is a, a topic today that certainly will challenge many of you. Um, today we're going to talk about the kingdom concept of discipline. The kingdom concept of discipline. Now, over the years, I, I have said to myself and to others, and I've really worked to apply this principle, this concept um, in my own life. Um, clearly, I'm not perfect like no one is, but and I'm working on myself. But I've said many times that life is really about decisions and discipline. Life is about decisions and discipline. And if you make the right decisions, then you're basically living out principles. And in our case, as kingdom citizens, we want to live out the principles uh, pertaining to the, the kingdom of God, the thing, the things of God. So again, life is about decision. Life is about discipline. If you make healthy decisions and you live a disciplined life, then I believe things will go very, very, very well for you. Things kind of just fall into place. So let's talk about the kingdom concept of discipline because we as kingdom kids, citizens should live kingdom principles, right? We should live out the principles. Jesus said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. I've given you the principles pertaining to how to live life and to live that life more abundantly. So when we talk about decisions and discipline, I want you to understand this. I want you to understand that discipline goes in front of decisions and in back of decisions. You may want to write that down. Perhaps somebody, if you could type that into in the uh, little chat area here on Zoom, or those of you that are on YouTube Live, it would be awesome. It would be awesome if you could uh, put that in the, the, the comments below for those that are connecting in perhaps a little bit later. So again, discipline goes in front and back of decisions that you make. So think of any decision that you make in life. Discipline needs to go in front of that and discipline goes in back of that. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about discipline. What what do you think about when you hear, when you hear the word discipline? What does it mean to you? What does that word kind of stir up in you? When you, if I was to say you need to be disciplined, does that perhaps trigger something in you? What, what, what does it do? What does it mean to you? Do you embrace that term, discipline, that you need to be disciplined or that you need to discipline, perhaps even self-discipline? What does it what does it mean to you deep inside, deep in your core? Do you do you trigger when you hear the term discipline? Do you, does a does a demon manifest of anger or rage or rejection or rebellion? What happens when you hear the word discipline? Is the word discipline negative in its complete connotation of the word discipline? Do you think in terms of that's negative? Well, we need to really understand this thing, discipline, because if, if, if life is about decisions and discipline, I believe they're both equally important. But again, discipline goes, you know, if you take the word decision or decisions, you have to put discipline in front of it and in back of it, because you will not make a healthy decision in life, whatever that may be, whatever area that may be without having 
discipline both in front of that decision and even in back of that decision. So here's what here's a question that I have for you, and just kind of let's just kind of have some dialogue today, <clears throat> um, and and hear what you have to to say about this, because I really want to understand what people are going through, what they're thinking, so that we can help you to understand this concept of of discipline. So so can you receive discipline? Can you receive it? Can you embrace discipline? Do, do you know how, <clears throat> excuse me, do you know how to self-discipline? We need to have self-discipline. You've heard that term before. I'm certain, you know, you need to be self-disciplined or you may have said, I need to have some self-discipline about, my, about myself. Um, do you know how to self-discipline? Um, can you, are you in a position where you, perhaps you're, you know, in some position of authority, a leader, um, perhaps you have children that you're raising up. Can you properly discipline others? Okay. We need to under we understand this. So we we have to listen, saints. We we have we must and understand that we 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 need to self discipline and we are to be disciplined. So. Yeah, I'm going to consider and say, well, I just need to have self-discipline, but not be subject and open to being disciplined by other people, okay? Or even systems. Uh, did not Jesus discipline his disciples? Of course, Jesus disciplined his disciples. They needed to be disciplined. Discipline is discipline is not a bad word. <laughs> discipline is a very good and healthy word. To be perfectly honest with you, how can you really be a genuine disciple of Jesus or a disciple of someone else because disciple is essentially a student? How can you be a disciple of someone without being disciplined? Okay? So I believe that we're really going to have a, a excellent, excellent time today. Josh, yeah, I see you put up that scripture. We'll get to that scripture <clears throat> a little bit later, which is paramount to our teaching found in Hebrews chapter number 12, okay? All right, so so I want to share this with you because a lot of people have problems with discipline. Oh, yeah, we, now, now again, in that scripture that Joshua, Joshua uh, brought up in Hebrews chapter 12, which we'll, we'll get to uh, eventually, here's the thing. People will say, well, yeah, I received the discipline of the Lord. Well, first off, do you even understand what the discipline of the Lord is? And what's amazing is we'll say, well, I received the discipline of the Lord, but have a very difficult time receiving discipline from other people, okay? Uh, much of this has to do with our upbringing, our training, the way that we were taught, our family life, our culture, um, whatever that may be. There, there's typically some problems in that area that really hinder us from understanding the concept of, of what discipline really is. Let me also interject here, and again, I, writing notes is always a, a good thing to do, is that a lack of discipline in your life, if, if you're someone who lacks discipline in your life, um, or you don't know how to properly discipline, <clears throat> excuse me, either yourself or others, a lack of discipline in your life many times is tied to fear. Now, we know in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7, it says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear in uh, Timothy, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So when we're in fear, we, we, we many times will feel suffocated and not self-discipline or open ourselves up to the discipline of other people people or systems okay so many fear discipline and let me explain to you why people fear discipline they they avoid discipline like the plague they 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 avoid self discipline and they be many times people like that will become very uh, uh certainly unhealthy in relationships um unhealthy as in in their own self 
um, but they'll become very unclean. When I say unclean, in other words, they'll engage in a lot of different things. Whatever those those things are, they'll they'll reach out and they'll connect with things that are unhealthy. Okay, things that are toxic, things that are perverse, um, things that uh, can it clearly it very negatively affect the mind, the emotions, and and of course the body. So that could be an addiction. Uh, that can be the occult. It could be sorcery. It could be, um, you know, Scientology. You know, it could be a host of different things. But again, people fear discipline, okay? Because most of the time they fear it because the, what they think was discipline was not discipline, but they were punished, specifically at a young age. So the reason people typically fear discipline or don't have any discipline in their life is because they were punished and they were abandoned. They were shamed when they were young. Okay. So their mindset of discipline, they, they, they were told or they thought that they were being disciplined, but they were being punished. And, and this can lead to, listen to me very clearly, the lack of discipline in one's life or the lack of understanding what discipline really is can actually be an enabler to having a mind that is split, what we would call schizophrenia, okay? Schizophren, schizo meaning split, friend being mind or of a split mind, double-mindedness, unstable mindset. You can put a lot of things in there. I mean, procrastination, you could put uh, uh, anxiety, uh, the fear clearly goes in there. So if you want to have a sound mind, you have to have a disciplined mind. Okay? A sound mind is a disciplined mind. Again, think of, think of, think of the scripture that we just uh, brought up. For God has not given us, we'll say in the King James Version, God has not given us spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That sound mind is speaking of a disciplined mind. We need to discipline our minds, don't we? Huh, absolutely. No garbage should come in our mind, or, or at least if garbage does come into our mind, that we do exactly the spiritual warfare that Paul the Apostle told us to engage in, and that is this, taking thoughts captive. In other words, arresting those thoughts. Yes, a thought can come in your mind. You could see something, hear something, experience something, whatever it may be. And that's going to come in your mind. But what we need to do is take that thought captive. Why do we permit that thought to just meander and, 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 and cascade into something else? That it, it you, No, we need to take that thought captive. Take that thought and arrest it, bind it. And then make a decision. See, see that's why I was saying, the, are you seeing this? The, the discipline goes before the decision. You have to have a disciplined mind that says, no, I'm going to discipline by taking thoughts captive. Then I'm going to make the decision based on the information that I have, which is the word of God, that says this thought is toxic and foul. This thought is wicked. Therefore, I'm not going to allow that thought, thought to take up residence in my life by virtue or by way of, of, of focusing on it or imagining it, okay? And if I did allow it to get that far, I have to now have the discipline and make the decision, watch this now, to cast down that imagination, utterly destroy that imagination, that thought. Now, Remember I said, you discipline goes in front and in back of decisions. If I choose to decide to take the thought captive, in other words, what somebody says about me, maybe they say, you're stupid, you're dumb, I don't like you, you're this, you're no value, I don't like the way you teach, I don't like the way you talk, I don't like the way you look, I don't like, I don't like you, Robert then the discipline in my life makes the decision, as I heard those words, to take the thought captive 
and or cast down the imagination. And therefore, I reap the benefit of that. But if I don't do that, remember, discipline, decision, discipline, then the discipline that comes from me just allowing that toxic thought or whatever it may be, relationship, what have you, to enter into my life, I now find that the discipline is the outcome of my choice. That's what discipline is. Let me, let me, let me, you know, as we're warming up here, let me, and, and I'm telling you, I'm really passionate about this today because I believe it can help a lot of people, a lot of people. Let me give you the definition of, of discipline. Discipline is the practice of training people or self to obey rules or a code of behavior. Now watch this. Using correction, never criticism, to address disobedience. Okay? Again, the, it's the practice of trainings, keywords training, people to obey rules or code of behavior using correction, not criticism to address disobedience. I do not believe, you know, people talk about, well, we need to, you need to, people will say this to you all the time, you need to accept or receive constructive criticism. Have you ever had a conversation and somebody said, oh, I'm just giving you constructive criticism. Well, here's the thing. God does not work with us as people. His relationship with us is not based on him giving us constructive criticism. The Lord, I mean, the word of God doesn't say that the Lord criticizes those he loves. The Bible says he corrects those whom he loves. Criticism, the word criticize, is comes from critique, which basically means to tear down. So how can you say construct, which means build up, yet criticize? So I'm going to give you constructive, or I'm going to build up only to tear you down? The devil is a liar. We're not going to receive that. You can receive it. You, you have a choice. You have a decision to make to receive that from people. I choose not to. And my discipline is, is that if you get in my face and you start saying that, then my discipline and my decision says no. And, 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 and watch this now. Discipline has everything to do with creating healthy boundaries in your life. You need to be disciplined to create healthy boundaries in your life so that you don't become the punching bag of Satan and clearly being abused by people. Okay, you got that? Now, the principle of this discipline is, is basic. It, it basically means obedience. Okay, the principle of discipline means obedience. Um, it means respect. Listen to me. Respect for authority. Respect for authority and observance of established rules that exist. Okay, so I'm disciplined in society and I do not just do whatever, you know, my flesh may say to do. I don't steal. I don't go flying through red lights. I don't, uh, you know, it can be I don't litter. Okay, because I'm disciplined not to do that. I respect authority. I'm obedient to civil authorities and I observe rules. Okay, now you could be growing up in your home. Okay, this is why we need to have healthy parents because parenting and discipline go hand in hand. We need to be obedient to parents. If we are obedient to parents and we honor our parents, it goes well with us. We live long. We should respect authority and observe the rules that we had in our, in our home. Okay. I think sometimes people think in terms of discipline as discipline is being punished. Let me help you out today. Discipline is not to be punished, okay, or to punish others. If I'm disciplining you, okay, or I'm disciplining my child, or I'm, I'm, I'm self doing, going through what we would refer to as self discipline, I'm not punishing people. I'm not punishing 
uh, I'm in a, in a position of authority. I'm not punishing those that are, for lack of a better term, under my authority. I'm not punishing them. I'm not punishing myself. Discipline, write this down, discipline is healthy. It's not toxic. Okay? Discipline is healthy, not toxic. And discipline is not punishment. I really think that we we have this view that somehow uh, that being disciplined is that we're being punished. No, that may be maybe the world's view of it. I'm not saying it's it's not. But the reality of it is, especially from the king, kingdom perspective, which is what we're focusing in on here, is that discipline is never about punishing. I, I believe today a lot of people, perhaps a lot of you that are watching, those of you that will watch this video later, you need deliverance. You need healing. You need wholeness. And you need deliverance specifically from being punished. How many of you have been punished in life, especially when you were a young child? You are punished rather than discipline. Perhaps you did something. You can remember when you were young and you did something, something that was wrong. Perhaps it was a mistake, whatever it may be. It was a, perhaps you violated a rule. Okay. You were disobedient to a rule in the home. Perhaps your parents or parent didn't, did not discipline you. But instead, they punished you, and they said, you're bad. Again, discipline is not punishment. Let me tell you what punishment is. Punishment is a payment. We punish people because we're expecting payment from people. That's not what discipline is. Discipline is a, a practice. Discipline is actually an art. Okay, it's a there's a there's the art be a good title for a book, huh? The art of discipline. Punishment looks to receive payment. I need you to pay for what you did. Now, this is antichrist thinking. Hmm. I really hope some people are getting free today. This is antichrist thinking. It's a mindset of the flesh that because you did something to me, I need to now punish you because you need to somehow pay me back. Discipline is not punishment. Some people punish themselves. Hmm. Isn't that the truth? Some people actually punish themselves for the things that they have done or even the things that have done, been done to them rather than discipline themselves or even receive discipline. They punish themselves. This is anti-kingdom because God is no longer punishing. You know, God is, listen to me clearly, I'm talking to somebody. God is no longer punishing humanity. I'm certain that'll, that'll really mess up some of the evangelicals, especially those that have this ridiculous in in, in, in spiritually retarded mindset of the end of, of the age. They don't even understand what the end of the age means. That somehow God is going to punish humanity. That God, let's talk, let's bring it here to the United States, that because of, and, and believe me, we have problems. Oh, society has, we are such an open, naked society we have embraced a doctrine of progressiveness that is opening up so much evil, to be perfectly honest with you. But even with that, God is still not punishing mankind or the United States. Now, because of the United States or whoever, their lack of discipline, their, remember, discipline, decision, discipline means that what we decide to do, our actions and behavior, there will be discipline, but not punishment. So God no longer punishes mankind. Punishment ended at and was finished at Calvary. Okay, Jesus said it is finished. Jesus paid 
the price. Remember I said punishment is paying a price? Punishment is a payment? Well, that punishment was put on Christ, whom all self bore our sins on the cross, that we being dead unto sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. I believe that's 2 Tim, uh, 2 Peter 2.24. So again, God is not punishing. He's not in the business of punishing. So get get free. If somebody needs to get free right now, get free right now, wherever you're at, and just know that God is not punishing you. Regardless of what you did, God is not punishing you. But there is discipline, and he will discipline you because he loves you. Amen? Now, the, 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 the Greek word for, for discipline is uh, paideia. Pad, or Padia, Padia, P A I D E I A. Okay. Um, Greek scholars use that word discipline, Padia. I mean, when, and what that me meant or what that means is uh, tutorage. It speaks about education. Um, this word discipline speaks about education, training. Okay. Um, and also disciplinary correction disciplinary correction or chastisement or chastity, excuse me, instruction to be nurtured. Basically, the word discipline means to teach, <laughs> to teach. Yeah, we thought it was punishment. You thought it was punishment. Beat yourself up. Be beat up by other people. No, it, you know, pay for your sins. You need to pay the price for your sin, you need to you need to pay the price, and you need to change, and you need to bring forth. I need to see some fruit. We we want to punish people. No, it's about teaching. Discipline is about teaching. So you could think in terms of discipline, decision, and discipline as teaching, decision making, and teaching based on your decision making. Okay, We're talking about life here. We're talking about the kingdom of God in life, how to live life, things you don't hear in church, right? You learn about the third and the second heaven and the, I don't know how many heavens they've come up with these days, but you learn about all these things that don't apply to life. Jesus came to teach us how to live life. So discipline means teach or, to, or teaching. And this, and this teaching that we're talking about as we're talking about discipline has both a positive and negative slant to it, okay? So both negative and positive discipline is healthy. Again, we talk about discipline. Discipline means to teach. There's a positive and negative slant to it. But both of those, don't think in terms of negativity, okay? Don't think like that. That this negative and positive slant to teaching or discipline is healthy healthy. What do you mean by that? Okay. Well, the, the positive facets of, of discipline basically means that that discipline is proactive. Uh, the discipline is uh, preventative or it's based on prevent. It, it looks to prevent and it looks to instruct. So we talked about uh, you're being disciplined or I'm self-disciplined. We're proactive up front. We're doing things to prevent, okay, and we're learning, we're receiving instruction. So think for, let me give you an example, okay? Um, think in terms of children, probably a, a, a good good area to, to, to look at. Positive discipline to a child is to sit them down and educate and train them. Now, I'll give you a scripture that we use a lot in explaining to people why it is they behave the way they do, how, the plan of Satan, how he really has <clears throat> brought in a lot of dysfunction into to our lives. And we go, we always talk about family, your your you know culture, your family, what have you. We bring up a scripture that's found in Ephesians chapter six, verse number four. Okay. And that scripture says, uh, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way that you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline 
and instruction that comes from the Lord. So fathers or parents, they have the responsibility to train up the children in the ways they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. In other words, discipline and instruct your children when they're young, so when they're old, they'll have a solid foundation that they can begin to build their life on called discipline. If they're disciplined, not punished, as many parents do, then they will have a healthy foundation that they can begin to build their life on so that they can make healthy decisions and grow in life. Okay, so that would be the positive facet of, of, of discipline. The negative facet of discipline is basically correction, okay? Correction, uh, chastisement, and consequences, but never punishment. Are you hearing me, people of God? So negative discipline is basically allowing someone, and this is what we need to do, allowing somebody to experience the results for their behavior to learn responsibility, self-control, and respect. How many people do you know, perhaps it's you, that lack responsibility, personal responsibility and accountability, lack self-control, and lack respect, mutual respect, self-respect. That's because they were probably punished rather than discipline. Discipline is a teacher, not a punisher. It's looking forward to your life, not backwards in the things that you did. So again, we're to, we're to <clears throat> allow someone to experience the results for their behavior, right? Listen, we, need to, uh, we always say this here. Stop trying to fix people. You need to allow people, okay, to be disciplined, meaning that allow them to experience the results of their behavior. Then the outcome from that discipline of experiencing the results of their behavior, they'll learn responsibility, self-control, and respect. You know, Proverbs chapter 15, <clears throat> verse number 10, I'm going to read out of the uh, New Living Translation, says this, whoever abandons the right path will be severely disciplined. Whoever hates correction, again, not criticism, will die or perish or suffer consequences. Okay? I mean, we've talked about this before. The Bible says very clearly in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7, that be not deceived, God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows in his life, that will he also reap. Why are we always trying to rescue people, fix people? Why are we always trying to get them to, to, to do what we want them to do? No, sometimes from a negative facet of discipline, the positive would be that you train them, you teach them. But the negative facet of it is that when they don't submit to teaching, in this case, teaching from the Lord. If they don't do it, then you know what? If you sow it, you reap it. We have a hard time with that. But that's discipline. So in, in childhood, discipline should have been proactive. It sh should be preventative, okay, which would be positive. But it also has to be, it also has to be correctional, and it has to be consequential, negative. So the positive part of disciplining your child <clears throat> is because you want to be proactive to help them and help them be, be proactive in making healthy decisions and preventive from making bad decisions. But it also, that discipline has to be correctional that when we make a bad decision, and they will, you will, we all will, that it's correctional and consequential. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so for example, your, your teenage child, for uh, using teenager, good example here, um, typically needs about eight to 10 hours of sleep, okay? Now, Dixie and I had seven children, 
and they've all, they're all grown now, but we understand this. They typically need about eight to 10 hours of sleep. So you discipline them in a positive way by setting a 10.30 p.m. bedtime, which of course they don't like, and you tell them through instruction, this is being done, 10.30 bedtime is being done so that you're alert and your mind is, is healthy, it's strong, it's, it's alert for school the next day, okay? That's called discipline to your child, but in a positive view. Well, let's just say <laughs> they, they stay up till midnight. Uh, maybe they're playing Xbox. Perhaps they're on their phone texting their friends or talking, whatever. Now you tell them, because you're still disciplining, you tell them because you made the decision to stay up till midnight. Notice I said because you made the decision to stay up at midnight. Now your phone or your Xbox will not be turned on or it won't be used today. What you just did there is you discipline them negatively. So again, they made the decision. Now, this is so powerful in life. If you can get this. They made the decision to stay up to midnight. You did your job by disciplining them and saying, this is what you need to do. You explained to them why they need to do it. They made a decision after that discipline that you set and they violated it, now they need to receive discipline from a negative view that says you will not, the consequence of your decision is you will not be allowed or you will not be able to use your cell phone or Xbox or whatever it may be uh, for a day or a week or whatever, whatever the thing. This talks, again, about boundaries. We have to have boundaries. Okay, that when the boundary is violated, this there has to be a consequence, but that's not punishment. It's discipline. Now, can you imagine if you could apply this in your life? Can you imagine if you can be open to discipline, how you will grow and develop? Okay, see, a, a healthy kingdom understanding of the concept of discipline will help you put it into practice and discipline the practice of discipline is going to help you grow listen we i want to grow my wife wants to grow and we want to help you grow the bible says grow in grace and notice it didn't say grow in condemnation notice it didn't say grow by the law by guilt and shame and blame and abandonment it doesn't talk about it, it says grow in grace and in the knowledge of your lord and savior jesus christ so a healthy kingdom mindset helps you put that into practice. And when you put discipline into practice, discipline helps you grow, whether individually, whether in a relationship, physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. Okay? Let me see if we have any comments here. Um, Josh says, the day I learned that mercy is a judgment, I became free. I was always taught after being saved that God would always be the judge of my life. And I was fearful and stuck in condemnation. However, I learned that God's judgment is mercy in the life of the believer. He corrects us, purifies us in a loving way like Apostle Robert is communicating. We are purified by obeying the truth. Amen. And he goes on to say, uh, the wrath of God is in the earth against disobedience, and we learn obedience through suffering. Yeah, and we're, <laughs> thanks, very good word, Josh, that you used, uh, suffering. And I'm going to talk about suffering because when, again, we have these negative connotations about these words that if, you know, suffering, oh, it's negative. That's negative. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Now, this, this topic of, of, of discipline, I believe, this is my view based on what I'm seeing in the Word of God from a kingdom perspective, that God allows us in life to practice. <laughs> we, we have, you know, Josh has talked about mercy. I, I love it. God understands that a lot of things in life will be trial and error. I, I, he allows us to 
practice, as it were. You know, trial and error. Decision, I made a bad decision, not a big problem. Uh, it, it, trial and error helps us grow, and, and we need believers to grow up spiritually, definitely. And then, of course, emotionally and pertaining to the things of life. We we need adults today. I mean, you know how many adults I talk to that I'm like, oh, goodness, I'm, it's like I'm talking to a little child. Well, I probably am emotionally because they they suffer from arrested development due to different things in their life. But li- listen, you listen, guys, we, we mature. I can speak about me. I, I know I've matured by making decisions. I, I, I can't stand when I'm in a room of people that don't make decisions. I, I just, I just, I don't like it. I don't like seeing couples that don't make decisions. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I don't know. We mature by making decisions, even if that decision is not the right decision. <laughs> We're, we're so caught up in everything has to be right. And then we use that same mindset and we judge, to Josh's point, we, we judge other people. We judge our spouse. Well, you didn't do everything right. You know, you're, you, you didn't do everything right, so you must be a narcissist. Chill out. No, we mature by making decisions. We see what works. We see what doesn't work. We, we make mistakes and we learn from those mistakes. And the concept is we should do better next time, right? Isn't that how it should work? Again, discipline, decision, discipline. So I'm an investor. I love to invest in the stock market, buy stocks and option, whatever it may be. And you know what? There's times I make bad decisions. That can be because I learned a principle but then apply the principle, or I got bad information and applied that, okay? Or I was in the flesh or whatever it may be. And that decision, that so I was disciplined to, to do something, learn, be taught, but I made a bad decision. And now in order to grow from that bad decision or mistake, I need discipline. The discipline is the consequence. What's the consequence? Well, in terms of investing, your consequence is you may have lost 100, 200, or perhaps thousands of dollars. That's called consequence. And that's discipline. And it helps me to grow. I mature. You know what? You know how many believers I know that won't do that? They beat themselves up. They blame the devil. You know, oh, the devil, the devil. I lost money because of the devil. No. (laughs) Stop stop blaming the devil for your decisions. Um, Write that down, please, somebody. Stop blaming the devil for your decisions. Stop blaming the devil for your lack of discipline in life or your inability to receive discipline from others. Making a mistake is okay. You learn from that, but there will be consequences to that mistake. All right? Always give yourself room and by the way always give yourself and others room to make mistake and just begin to practice discipline practicing discipline positive negative can help us in establishing boundaries for our life if we do this boundaries you know 98% of the people i talk to i can say do not have boundaries they don't have boundaries in different areas of their life relational finances 90 some percent of people I talk to, I ask financially, do you have a budget? No. You know what that means? You don't have a boundary and you are undisciplined. You're not taking principles. How can you be kingdom minded and not be disciplined? So therefore, you're going to make bad, toxic, septic, unhealthy decisions and you will, you will have a consequence to that. You got it? So we we need to practice discipline. Look at, look at, that's how we grow, people. Ephesians, excuse me, um, um, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter five. All right? Where are we at on time? All right, we're we're doing okay. Hebrews chapter five, uh, verse number 11. Look at this. And again, I'm going to read in the uh, New Living Translation. 
go on to say, there's, there's so much more we would like to say about this. But it's difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and you don't seem to even listen. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching or discipling other people. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. You're like babies who need milk and you can't not or you cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what's right. <laughs> Glory to God. Watch this now. Solid food, okay, is for those that are mature. Underline solid food and mature. Watch this now. And through training. What's that word? Discipline. Did I tell you discipline is training? Got a young child? You discipline them up front by creating disciplines in their life that says, this is the boundary. You go to bed at 1030. Why? Not am I punishing you. It's because I'm looking forward. You need to be healthy in your mind and fresh in the morning. Okay. So the word of God goes on. Solid food is for those that are mature. Can you handle it? Can you handle discipline? Most people can't because they're immature. But if you handle and you receive discipline front and back end, then you'll grow mature through training, discipline, and watch this, and have skill or the skill to recognize the difference, the Bible talks about in the King James, to discern right and wrong. What does that mean? So if you have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong, let me ask you this. Do you think you'll make a healthy decision? I think you will. Well, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> well, that's because you're undisciplined. Goes on to say, the word again goes on to say, so let's stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in understanding. We don't, it says here, surely we don't need to start again the fundamental importance of, watch this now, repenting from evil deeds. I'll stop there. We focus, the, if I could have $100 for everybody that says you need to repent, 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 we are so conscious of sin and wrongdoing, and, and we're so focused on that. And when it happens, you need to repent, you need to repent, you need to repent, you need to repent, repent. We're so focused on that. And here it's saying, we don't need to start talking about that. That's foundational. That's foundational. But so many are focused because they're, let me tell you why people say you need to repent. You know what they're doing? Let, let's just keep it real. They're trying to punish you. Hmm. And, and again, I'll say this. Discipline is not punishment. It's a natural kingdom law, people. It's a natural, natural kingdom law. Discipline is not punishment. It's a natural kingdom law that says our actions reap consequences. Our actions cause us to, Josh's word, and I agree, suffer consequences. Discipline looks forward. Punishment looks backwards. We, 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 we punish people to pay for what they did in the past, even yesterday. Punishment focuses on paying for the price of wrongs done in the past, even yesterday, even a minute ago. Discipline looks forward. Why? Because the lessons we learn from being disciplined, front end, back end, help us to make, help us not to make the same mistake again. Mistakes are decisions. We made a decision. Discipline looks forward and says, you know what? You're, you were taught, you did this, or you weren't taught, you were ignorant. Well, again, doesn't matter. You made a decision, and now this is the consequence, and the consequence is good. Listen, doesn't God discipline us for our good? L let's go to that, let's go to that, 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 uh, let's go to, let's go to the book of Hebrews, okay? 
Let's go to the book of Hebrews right quick. Okay. Go to Hebrews chapter uh, 12. It, this is the scripture Josh, uh, Josh, Joshua brought up earlier. Hebrews chapter 12. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, pick it up. We'll pick it up at verse number three. And I'm going to read again out of the, uh, the New Living Translation. Okay. It says here, think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings. Think about that. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not given your lives in your struggle against sin. In other words, you didn't pay the price. And have you forgotten in the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my children, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. The, Bible, the King James says, do not despise the Lord's chastening or the chastening of the Lord. It says here, my children, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines the Lord disciplines those that he loves, okay? And, and then it says, he, and he punishes, okay, bad word there, each one he accepts as a children, because that's not true. That's a missed, missed uh, interpretation of what the word of, God, word of God says, okay? It's not punishing. King James actually uses the word scourges, okay? says, as you endure his divine, I love it, divine, his divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Okay? We don't punish children. We discipline our children. And whoever, and whoever, excuse me, and whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his ch his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the Father of Spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always what? Good for us so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful because there's consequences, right? But afterwards, there is a, watch this now, peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. What way? The ways of discipline. The ways of discipline. The ways of discipline, decision, discipline. <laughs> so take a new grip. This word of God continues. In. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak or feeble knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but will be strong. See, <laughs> I love it. Understanding discipline will free you, will free us to make mistakes without the fear of being judged or the fear of being abandoned by those we're in relationship with, whether that's parents, children, whether that's a loved one, a spouse, someone you're thinking about potentially marrying, you're courting or you're engaged to, friends, friendship, Understanding discipline will free us so that we can be open, we can be transparent, and we, 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 we're we okay with making a mistake because we know that's how we grow. And watch this now. This is how we help other people grow. We can all grow together. The body of Christ should grow together. You know why the body of Christ can't grow together? Because we're so busy condemning and attacking our own self with judgment persecution, rage, retaliation, narcissism, Jezebel, witchcraft, perversion. We're just constantly, consistently punishing people. Now we need to discipline, discipline, 
But here's the problem. I'm finding that a lot of believers can't endure. Again, we just saw this in Hebrews chapter 12. Jesus endured. He endured it. We cannot endure. So we take, let's say it's a, and, and I pastored a, a, a group of people. Uh, and any time that I even remotely got close to disciplining them, which means what? To instruct, to teach, and or to correct, to allow to suffer consequences. Anytime I got close to that, even those people that said, oh, you're my spiritual father, you're my what, whatever, or, or, or used to, apostle, apostle, oh, you're my spiritual father. The moment I got close to disciplining, they tucked tail and ran. The rejection kicked in because they, not, be, not because of me, but they were soul tied with abandonment. They were in fear. They were in with they they were bound by rejection, and they looked at discipline as a punishment, like somehow I'm punishing people. I wasn't punishing, I was disciplining. And the Lord says He disciplines those He loves. When we don't listen, let me bring this to closure. When we don't, if you're a parent, if you don't discipline your child or children on the front end and back end of decisions they make, if you don't do it, number one, you're in violation of scripture. Number two, okay, you are what we'd call a toxic parent. Toxic. Because you are setting them up for total failure in life. Now, that may be you or that may have happened to you. This is why we coach people. This is why we coach people. Because we need to unravel all this stuff and get people to understand this is why you behave the way you do. Okay, this is why. All right. If we don't discipline and if we don't, if we're not in our church, we should be in places where we connect to ministries or churches. We have healthy leaders and they, they understand this concept of discipline, not punishment, and be able to be corrected when correction is needed. You know, how many people I, I, there's people I talk to and I'm like, if I, if I say anything, they just trigger. They, they manifest their rejection. They go into seclusion. They isolate themselves because they think somehow that the discipline is me abandoning them or attacking them or uh, punishing them. No. Understanding discipline from our perspective and yours will help you to be free, knowing that you can make mistakes without fear of being judged by someone, a leader, a husband, a wife, a parent, whatever it may be, or abandoned by that person in a relationship, specifically your relationship with God. Okay? Doesn't, listen, wherever you're at, whatever you're thinking right now, I want you to understand this. God is not going to abandon his relationship with you because of a bad decision or a mistake or a sin, which means miss the mark, that you did. God doesn't abandon you. It's not how God operates. It's not his nature. God looks at your decisions. Again, he wants you to live the, dis disciplined, the disciplined life. You make your decisions. He knows you're going to make bad decisions. He knows you're going to fail. He, 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 he doesn't have a problem with that because he also knows that the way he's designed things is that you're going to grow from that. And he has to implement discipline at the back end, meaning that you need to understand that there's consequences. And if you make a bad decision, there is a consequence because that helps you make a healthier decision. But he doesn't abandon you. He's, in, he's right there through that. Listen, I'll finish up by repeating myself that discipline is not punishment. So if you, if you perhaps you're a believer, perhaps you've sinned, Perhaps you've gone down a rabbit hole of dysfunction and maybe you started uh, uh, drinking or you, you're, you're, you're uh, uh, on drugs or uh, in, a, in, you're in perversion. You're, you're in pornography or you're, in, in, in you're fornicating or whatever. You, maybe you committed adultery. I don't know what you did and I don't need to know what you did. All I want you to know is this. There's discipline in that. 
but not punish. God is not punishing you and he's not abandoning you. The Bible says that in, in Romans chapter 8 that there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So stop receiving condemnation. Start embracing this thing we're calling discipline. Discipline of yourself. Discipline by others or discipline from God allows you the freedom to practice and experience life.